Throughout the 1900s, large agricultural growers utilized foreign laborers for harvesting crops. Initially, European and Asian immigrants were working at these industries. However, the First World War in 1914 led to a restriction on these migrations into the U.S. Therefore, growers were low on workers. The available jobs attracted and caused a demand for Mexican farm workers. Agricultural companies became open to hiring Mexicans as their main labor force, so immigration rates became high during this time. Over 30,000 Mexicans came to the United States to work in the agricultural factories just in California. Extreme manual labor was necessary for this job and it was done for a low price. One of the main reasons for the success of agricultural industries was the slow paying Mexican labor. A produce company executive added, large-scale production would be impossible without Mexican field labor. Without the Mexicans, costs would be increased 50%. Industries were able to profit more from highly productive and efficient Mexican labor. Corporation owners expressed content for Mexican workers. This is seen in 1928 when the LA Times published a column titled, Hands Off, which displayed American agricultural growers' thoughts on Mexican immigration limits, why those should not be an act, and why Mexicans are an integral part of the community. The LA Times stated, There have been no disturbances. Where the Mexicans are employed, they are welcome. Mexican farm workers were greatly utilized and their hard work was not reflected in pay or living conditions. Farm industries were self-centered and only acknowledged them for the economic success they brought to companies, which is seen in Hands Off. If they are not permitted to return this year, the harvest of southwestern orchards and ranches will be reduced. The lack of human rights went unmentioned. Similarly, a news bulletin reflecting on immigration between Mexico and the U.S. earlier in the 1920s recalled when Congress threatened to restrict how many Mexicans would be allowed in the U.S. Congress demanded that immigration from Mexico should be regulated by law, that Mexico should be placed under the quota system, the same as the various European nations. Many large industry growers were opposed to this because they believed this restriction would cause a great regression in the southwestern economy. Growers preferred Mexican laborers over Americans. In Hands Off, it is stated, They are children of the sun and they perform a service for which those born in colder climates are neither suited nor inclined. Industry saw Mexicans as docile and hardworking and genetically built for the harsh working conditions. This allowed growers to take advantage of them. However, the urgent insistence by Congress to take action was due to an overwhelming number of Mexican immigrants in the states. Mexicans were seen as an asset to large agricultural companies, but in the eyes of the people, they were a burden to the hospitals and institutions that were taxed more. With the Immigration Act of 1924 in place, there were already national quotas to limit the immigrants entering the U.S. Although few foreign laborers were allowed in the U.S., wages for needed Mexican labor remained at a low. The amount of intense work they did for many hours was not reflected in their pay. In a response to the laborous abuse, Mexican farm workers formed unions to defend their rights. The Imperial Valley Workers Union was one established in 1928 and was very active in making demands for increased wages and other requests. This union asked for help on negotiations with growers from the Chamber of Commerce, which was an association of business owners that promoted economic growth and civic activism. However, the Chamber of Commerce disregarded the request. As a result, members went on strike. Despite various walkouts, most growers continued to disregard the unions, but some made small adjustments to increase wages and followed a standard picking agreement. There are major similarities between the United States presently and in the recent past. Many current Mexican laborers continue to take on low-paying, intense jobs. Workers are still trying to come to the U.S. for better paid opportunities, regardless of advanced technological methods. Most Mexicans are seen working the jobs most Americans don't want because they are physically tedious and are a disservice to others.